This week on Taste Utah, we're at Dirty Bird in Ogden, the brainchild of Michael McHenry, a restaurateur committed to helping build and empower his team by creating a restaurant brand and menu deeply rooted in simplicity, passion, and a love of cultivating community. These three simple ingredients can be found in every bite of their delicious Nashville-style hot chicken. Then we're in Salt Lake City, where Amy Wonderly Britt has been paying homage to her southern roots for over a decade through the menu and hospitality found at Pig and a Jelly Jar. And I'll tell you, Utah cannot get enough. Now, along with her wife, Vivi, they're shaping a new kind of restaurant model in Salt Lake City, inspired by human and community-centered hospitality, embracing the care and kindness that has always been synonymous with Pig and made it such a special place to gather. Taste Utah is more than your typical food show. It's about local flavor, from roots through authentically Utah restaurants. It's the people and the places that make Utah a dining destination. There's so much soil and earth to uncover and still so many great Utah restaurants to savor. We bring you the stories and we spread the love. The best thing about Utah, the views along the way, they're not bad either. We're not afraid to get our hands just a little dirty. Food is a necessity. And it's how we create it and share it and experience it together that truly shapes our community. Whether you're choosing to dine in our dining rooms, order to go, or get delivery, you always have a seat at this table. Are you ready to taste Utah? We're in Ogden and I'm taking you to Dirty Bird. Dirty Bird is a Nashville hot chicken style restaurant concept. Michael McHenry, well, we met him at Oakwood Fire Kitchen a couple of years ago. We're about to go have him introduce us to what this concept's all about. Michael! Katie, how oh are you? Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. So great to have you. I mean, this location is fabulous. Dirty Bird 2.0, here I we know. are, Ogden, it's, Utah. It feels like yesterday, we were at the one in Provo. Is that crazy? I mean, 20 months is doesn't seem like a long time, but most but definitely like is. And yeah. I feel like, especially what we've dealt with lately, it's just, everything seems like yesterday. Oh my gosh, yeah. I can't wait to sit down yeah. with you. Well, here we go. We've got a lot of stuff to show you okay. today, at least 10 items on the Dirty Bird menu. So welcome and can't wait to share with awesome. you. Let's do it. Michael, this is pretty fabulous. <laughs> or dirty. I mean, yeah. Yeah, fabulously dirty. <laughs> yeah, um, of course. Hot chicken. Talk to me a little bit about Dirty Bird. We opened the end of January 2020. Uh, that was our first opening right in Provo, just south of BYU campus. Yeah. Obviously, the concept originally, I think the first idea uh, the ideation of hot chicken for us, at least under Dirty Bird, was clear back in 2013. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, I think first and foremost, like what's most timeless about it is just the simplicity. Okay. Right? Chicken just, and, and there is complexity to getting it right, but again, the Dirty Bird menu has 10 items total. We have three yeah. different sandwiches, uh, you know, four sides of dessert, and, and two variations of fries. And so I think simplicity is what's most exciting, I think, okay. about being something that is. Uh, hot chicken focus, but I also think there's a character, like there's a depth and a legacy to hot chicken that it's really where like craft and hospitality meets soul. There's just something about being very proud about your seasoning, about your spice, about yeah. what you're putting in between your bun and Dirty Bird, I feel like checks those boxes yeah. and it's been a heartfelt project for me since day one. For, for one, I'm a savory guy, okay. right? I'm not, I'm not big into desserts. I love desserts. I have great desserts on other menus, but to me, like this is this is almost dessert to me. It's what I want to eat every day. Yeah. I love like I love fried chicken and I love the depth of flavor. Yes. Yeah. From texture to flavor profile to the layers of uh, from the spicy to the to the sweet and the savory, everything that happens there to me is what I prefer to eat. It's like a ba like a perfectly balanced dish. In my opinion. Yeah. And I think that's so subjective, but yeah. to me, we have created such a balanced I think flavor profile and texture yeah. around the sandwich that I think no one else is doing in the country. I love it. Now is there only one spice level here? No, so we so we either have we have our classic, okay. which is just well seasoned and, and very flavorful, okay. and then we have hot. 
Okay. And the hot is like a, it's a seven on a scale of a one to 10. It's like warm your belly, fill it through the palate, yeah. and you're gonna taste it and feel it an hour after you leave, right, which yeah. we love. We utilize Thai chili uh, to kind of create that heat. So nice. what's kind of traditional to hot chicken is that cayenne up front that like burns your lips, burns your face, makes you cry. Yeah. And here, I want everything to be flavorful. I want you to taste the heat. Yeah, so There's a big difference. I want, it, I want it to build through each bite. Yeah. And you'll know through what we do here at the McHenry Group, as well as obviously at, at uh, Dirty Bird, it's everything to us is, is a very palatable experience yeah. from what we do visually to what we do texturally to what we do from flavor profiles and the sourcing of those ingredients are so important yeah. and that's what we love. Tell us what we have in front of us. Yeah, so what you're having right now I think is one of our total classics which are the dirty fries. Okay. And so you have um, our, our brined and twice fried fries with the pimento cheese, it's got the pimento pil uh, chilies as well as uh, three variations of cheese. Then you have the chopped thigh and then local dailies bacon, a sprinkled on top, then you got the house uh, ranch. So as you can see, nice. that to me, that can become a meal. Yeah, right? no, this, it is a like, meal. this is like all you need. And then <laughs> totally. like maybe some mac and cheese if you're me. And the mac and cheese, <laughs> as you know, has a little bit more of a sophisticated palate. This yeah. is not like kind of the run of the mill mac and cheese, but we wanted to keep it classic enough okay. um, that it, that it kind of meets the okay. needs of those that would go for it. But that is one of our most popular sides. Nice. Uh, it's simple yet delicious. I love that the, uh, and the wonderful. it's like elbow macaroni, but it totally. has the rich which is really cool. In front of you, is this just your Yeah, so this is this is it. the classic. Okay. Uh, this, to me, if there's such a thing as perfection, this is it. I love uh, it. I don't You're believe looking a chicken, at that like, I don't, hey, maybe. Yeah, I don't believe that a chicken sandwich gets any better. It's, as you know, um, it's highly romantic for me. Yeah. And like, when I look at this, to me, I go like, okay, this is it. This is hundreds of iterations to land here yeah. to create what I believe is the perfect sandwich and the perfect bite. Yeah. And they say the best restaurants, you know, in the country, it's kind of like those three to five bites of something. So to have something that this size that you know is going to take 10 to 12 bites to finish, yeah. that took a lot of work. I mean, is that a brioche bun? This is the classic Martin's potato bun. Oh, nice. So we ship it into the market. It was just critically important. And I love utilizing local bakeries and others. However, when it came to this sandwich, and I think just, again, nodding to what is most timeless about hot chicken, yeah. it needed the right potato bun, and Martin's is it. It's something, like, oftentimes you look at chicken, or you look at these counter service brands, yeah. and people go, oh, it's so easy, or look at how easy that is, or the simplicity of it. And there's no question, I think, that the best brands or the best experiences are simple, yeah. but the intention that goes into getting those six items or those 10 items right, and that's why I believe we've created the success that we have here, from essence of brand to the culture to the food. A big part of why I do what I do is not just for the sake of my love for brands, in community as we all know, or I've, I've said I hope you all know, <laughs> but to also show other people that it's possible if you just pursue your mission and your vision with unwavering pursuit and you never give up, Yeah, huge things are possible. Well, and so, you're doing a great love. job and uh, <laughs> I'll eat to that. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. All right, Spencer, executive chef, operations partner, Dirty Bird. That's right. Um, what a great conversation we just had with Michael. But Absolutely. really, this is where the magic happens. This is where you're putting the romance in that sandwich. Definitely. What are you gonna make for us, first of all? So, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make our namesake sandwich. Okay. That's the Dirty Bird. Okay. First. Oh. First things first. First things first, we're gonna grab our bun. This potato bun, this Martin's. Martin's potato signature bun. Signature potato bun. That's I right. I love a potato bun. The industry standard. Yeah. There's not a better potato bun out there. It looks really good. But I noticed no butter, no oil, nothing, just nope. heat. We just let the heat do its job. Okay. Love it. Um, after Next. that, we're gonna come over to our fryer and we'll grab just a thigh straight from the cold holding. Okay. How many of these sandwiches do you feel like you're going through a day right now? I mean, it's a pretty popular concept in Ogden. Yeah, per day, um, we're looking at something like between four and 600. Jeez Louise, that is awesome. Absolutely. Uh, we always got to keep things sanitary, so we'll change our gloves out. Nicely done. Absolutely. And how do you know when this is done? Does it just kind of rise to the top? We'll usually set a timer. Okay. We, we actually fry it at a lower temperature than normal, uh, uh, just to keep that skin a uh, beautiful blonde color rather than getting dark. Yes. So while these are going, we're going to go ahead and pull the bun up. Okay. Ah, oh, beautiful. 
That's where you. That's what we want to see. A nice golden brown. Yeah, Delish. absolutely. Yeah, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ketchup and mayo. Okay. Yeah, this, this is, is your no, Dukes, right? Yes, this is no regular mayo. So Yay. this is our Dukes. Cool. What we have here is actually our own uh, mixture. It's more of an aioli. Okay. Um, so we use Dukes as a base, and then we add more things to it. Nice. So we'll put the Dukes on the bottom. Okay. And we'll put our spicy ketchup on the top. So You're here, generous with the pickles, which we love to see that. Absolutely. Oh, I do. I, it I love pickles. It being Nashville hot chicken. <laughs> yes. Of course, you need to add some of that acidity in there. Uh, Absolutely. The chicken's very rich and uh, it's just yeah, there to balance out that flavor. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to take our pimento cheese. Okay. It's another one of our proprietary blends. For people who don't know what pimento cheese is, it's a yes. huge condiment in the South. It is, it's and huge. And what is it? Yes. Break and it down. So it's basically a mixture of uh, cream cheese, white cheddar, uh, pimentos, which are a sweet, dice like kind of a red pepper yeah uh, and that will all get put together with more of our spices and of course some duke's mayo yes and a little uh, bit we'll of mayo that, together. that makes it spready yes gives it a great texture for the sandwich so we throw bacon bits on top got your dailies bacon michael told us absolutely we we try to keep everything as local as possible nice local utah bacon mm -hmm. company absolutely so we're then Going to take our chicken. Okay. Beautiful crispy thigh. Absolutely. And we have our own blend. What I'm dipping it in right now is our mild chili oil. Okay, so you're dunking it. You're giving it a nice immersion in there. Absolutely, yeah. We want to get that totally coated. Immersive experience. And then we have, of course, our another proprietary blend of spices. Yeah. We call our Dirty Bird Spice. So this Thanks is so it. Much. This is the Dirty Bird right here. That's This beautiful. is what we're all about. It's our namesake sandwich. Mm, very simple, classic. I feel like I need to take that and sample it for myself. Absolutely. I always like it when people um, make things for me. So Go thank yeah. you so much. This has just been such an incredible experience. I mean, Dirty Bird is so fun. It's clear you know what you're doing. Like you're not messing around. Nope. And with multiple locations coming Utah's way, there's gonna be a chance to sample Dirty Bird wherever they go. Uh, wherever you go, we're gonna be all the way up and down the Wasatch Front. Oh, so cool. Well, Ogden first. They'll have to come to Ogden for the first little while, but um, thank you so much. I'm gonna go uh, check this out. Okay. We're on 900 South, 400 East in Salt Lake City. And hey, we're not letting a little rain, a little hail stop us from taking you to Pig in a Jelly Jar. This is their flagship location. Owners Vivi and Amy, well, they're doing things a little differently here. And I cannot wait for you to taste all the homegrown goodness. Let's do this thing. Hi, Katie. Hi, Vivi. How are you? Yeah, good. How are you? Doing Welcome. really well. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. It's it's been a long time. We've wanted to feature Pig in a Jelly Jar for some time, um, but today's the day. Yes, we're super excited to have you here. We have a couple of things already set up, so let's sit down. Let's do it. Cool. Vivi and Amy, your owners, operators of Pig in a Jelly Jar. How long has Pig been here? Whew, 10 years. So a decade. 10 years, a decade, yeah. yeah. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. I mean, I can't believe it's been 10 years. Like, it's flying. If you're going to brunch, you go to Pig, you will drive past Pig in a Jelly Jar, there's always just a line out the door at the, on 900 South. I always drive by and I'm like, oh. This neighborhood has been so good to us. Our community has been so supportive and we're happy to continue to be growing and, and being in the game, you yeah. know? I love what we do, yes, don't you? I do, I'm thankful for all of those who wait, because you know, sometimes we are yeah. an hour and a half too far away. I mean, that's like part of the Pig and Jelly Jar experience. It's like to come, mm -hmm. like wait a little while, yeah. you get to meet people while you're outside and chat, and it's it's really fun. Tea Grotto's right next door. I mean, there's a lot of mm -hmm. things to do. Liberty Park, just go for a little walk if it's an hour wait, right? Oh yeah. yeah, and we've got the Asian Market across the street with Ton and his family who have been a staple in the community for so long, yeah. and we encourage this walking and then coming back when your table's ready. What what do we have in front of us? I'm gonna 
dig in, because that's what I do. All right, well, Vivi, this is your favorite. That is my favorite, chicken and waffle. Okay. Um, I got obsessed with, I, with it when I met Amy seven years ago. Um, and then what do you have in front of you? This is the ham, ham hash, and okay. on the staple too. It's a delicious meal. The, the ham hash has kale and, and potatoes and some red peppers. As long as there's kale in it, it's healthy, right? We've been doing kale before that became a thing yeah. too. It was, uh, it was harder to teach, you know, collard greens and cider greens, and so as we're uniquely southern inspired here at Pig, yeah. kale was a great option to teach these guys kind of some of the flavors from where I'm from in the south. I mean, I think that's such a unique part of most restaurants, so mm -hmm. sometimes the consumer doesn't understand until you sit at the table with the person that's created it to mm -hmm. say, this is a little bit of my life experience on a plate, and I'm inviting you in here to share that. I agree. People know Pig and a jelly jar on the corner of 900 South in Salt Lake City, um, for hospitality, customer service, all these wonderful things. And your model has shifted a little bit. So we now have put ourselves in seven positions in the restaurant okay. to really, that's what brings this dish and these drinks to you. It takes at least seven people on busy days and on busy weekends, you'll see 10 to 12 of us really all working as a team to provide an experience. The counter service is, it's where your experience begins, yes. but then we have bartenders and we have food runners and we have people busting the table and refilling the drinks and, and our uh, hospitality fee, which is quite different, of 18%. Um, it, it's encouraged so that our community can take an active role in us and them being able to take care of ourselves, really. We're hourly paid, mm -hmm. uh, 12 to 21 50, 401k benefits, and hiring entrepreneurs, innovators, and trailblazers more than where it used to represent from chefs and servers. And the, the reason we're making those shifts, it's not to change who we are, it's really to just say, this is who we are, and this is how we can afford to make this a viable career option and really work as a team to provide hospitality instead of it being just one person person on one occasion, which to me felt like the old model. Well, yeah. you're doing a wonderful job and you're actually you're actually even creating like this little market concept where mm -hmm. not only are you able to offer people a taste of pig in a jelly jar all over the country by selling things like this adorable coffee and waffle mix and yes. jam, yep. but also offering a space where a consumer can come in and buy a product of one of these entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So Jesse the Banana Bread Boy uh, is with us at our store in Ogden okay. and, and works at farmers markets and all over and actually has a wonderful reputation. So. <laughs> For Jesse to be on our team and then partner with us to make a banana bread with one of our blueberry lavender jams, 10% of the proceeds go to the Piggy Bank Scholarship Fund. So we're partnering with Jesse, we're promoting products that Jesse already creates, we're working with our blueberry lavender jam, and then still we're able to give back through a scholarship to any of our teammates so they can, again, what is it you're looking to do here? How can we help? That's so cool. Yeah, it's yeah. like a little incubator in here. It is. It and is. then if people want to get like something like this, how do they go about getting it? Talk to us a little bit about. Yeah, so the Good Day Sunshine is our uh, way of bringing sunshine to people, not just of Utah, but you know, nationwide, because we can ship it nationwide. Um, they can come to this store and buy one here, or they can go to our website and buy it on our website. So, okay. and again, we'll ship them anywhere. It has our uh, signature coffee. It has our signature jam. Yeah, we can like, open it up. Yeah, let's open it up. It's a, it's a gift, right? That's the other thing. It's a, a great way to getting... start your day. Yeah, yes. super cute. And of course, it's always good to start your day with some coffee. Yeah. So we have our signature coffee here. Okay. The pig coffee. Mm -hmm. We have our blueberry lavender pig jam. And then it has a waffle mix that's it down, has in a waffle mix. down in the bottom. Oh, there. down in the bottom. Yeah, yeah and, and then the recipe card underneath the waffle mix. So it, it just teaches you how to make, you know, that's just, we are recommending that that's how you make it, but you can make however, because food is about being creative. Yeah. And we include a positive note, because again, I think especially after last year, everyone needs a little bit of more positiveness in their life. Mm. So we send a sparkler so they can just share good thinking and good vibes with the universe. Um, I love that. Just a little positive message and a thank you. Yeah, it started actually with our sister concept, WB's Eatery. Yes. At 9 p.m. we would light sparklers on the patio and give gratitude for the day. 
and what starts with the sister concept or vice versa. I mean, we, we just brought it over to the pig in a jelly jar. Mm -hmm. And it was during the time uh, when the restaurants were closed and we were only online. And this was Vivi's idea of sharing positivity to the world. So we just continue it. Yeah. And we're two years in and every to-go order online and any of our boxes, they do come with this positive messaging and you're encouraged to light up at nine o'clock and share gratitude for the day. It's just Whoa. fun ways again that I think the 360 brand itself, Pig in a Jelly Jar specifically, how can we help and how can we help each other? Speaking of sparkle, I like to go back into the kitchen and see where the magic yes. takes place. Yes. Magic is obviously here, but like I'll get some of that sparkling action and maybe like some fuego back in oh, the kitchen. Oh yes, sounds good. <laughs> okay, yes. cool ladies, thank you so much. Thanks for having thank us. All right, Gabby, we're in the kitchen of Pig in a Jelly Jar. What are you making for us? Hi, good morning. We are making a barbecue pork sandwich for today. And okay. Okay. Awesome. And so barbecue pork, just shredded pork that you probably cooked. Yeah, the pork is the full pork. Okay. We are cooking here. And the barbecue sauce, uh, we are making on our house. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. It's delicious. So the sandwich comes with um, french fries? Yeah. Lovely. Sometimes the customer is asking for salad, but okay. regular is uh, with a fries. I mean, if you're, if you're getting a shredded pork sandwich, uh -huh. you want french fries. Yeah. I mean, salad, leave that, leave that salad good. business yeah, somewhere right. else, right? Make it down a salad, down a salad. A little bit of salt for the french fries. Good, a nice, healthy portion of french fries. Yeah, yeah. Love that. And then who is your assistant that's helping us? What's her name? My daughter. Your daughter? Yeah. Who's Diana? Diana? What's her Diana. name? Diana. Diana. Yeah. Diana and Gabby sort of dream team back here in the kitchen. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Mom and daughter. Yeah. Okay, so she's putting pickles down, a little bit of the pork. I mean, that is a healthy portion of pork. No, but I got So this is pickles okay. here. And the barbecue pulled pork. It's a slaw and that's all slaw. Okay, bag. boom, bag. and that's it. And so then we, so here we have the famous pig in a jelly jar, shredded pork sandwich, yeah. fresh French fries. I mean, thank you so much. This has just You're been welcome. such a You're fun experience, and yeah. what a cool story! Mom and daughter in the kitchen, crushing it at yeah. pig in a jelly jar. She is my best student. Oh. Yeah. You're probably her best teacher. Oh, thank you thank so much. You thank you, ladies. Thank you. Have a good day.